In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to use deduce to analyze your qualitative data, right? So um, the, the, the previous video, I've showed you how to upload the resources or upload the transcript into Envivo, how to create demographic information and connect them to the transcript that you have. The next step is to start the coding process. And how do you do that? Follow me and let me show you how to do the coding. As you can see here, we have all the transcript here and there's empty space here. There's no information here in terms of the code. So what we, do we have to do first? Before you start a coding, you have to think about your research question, right? Because at the end of the day, you have to address your research question that you have, right? That's the essence of you doing the coding. So uh, in this case, I have my two research question here, right? The first research question is about what are the causes of burnout among primary healthcare physicians, right? And the second research question is what can be done to reduce burnout among primary healthcare physicians? So these are the two research questions that I want to address. I want to develop codes under each of the two research questions. So what you have to first do is to assign labels to your research question. Why do you have to assign labels to the research question? So that you make sure that you are developing codes under each of the research question is a way of organizing the codes that you're going to develop, right? So in this case, the label that I want to give to my first research question will be burnout causes, right? And the second one is burnout solution. You can give any label to your research question, any label that will remind you of your research question as you are going through the data. That's very important. So now that we label our research question, we go back to deduce and then we create containers for the research question. Why do you have to do that? We're going to create code under each of them. So you see here, it's, it says add root code. The root code, we can call it a parent code or the huge container that you want to create so that you can create subcodes or um, chart codes under those containers. So the first one will be burn out causes. And then in parentheses, you're going to do uh, RQ1, just to remind you that it's research question one. And under the description, you can copy and paste your research question there. Um, is a way of just making sure that this label is for the research question one, right? And then after that, you just click on submit. So you can see here that I've created a research, um, a label for the first research question. I'm gonna do the same thing for the second research question. I click on a plus sign, and then this one will be burn out solutions. And then I will say RQ2 because it's about research question two. And then what I will do is I'll copy this one and paste it here. Um, and then I click on submit. So now we have two huge containers reflecting the research question that we have. That's the first step that you have to do, right? So that you'll be able to code, develop code and put them under their respective research question that you have, right? You may ask if you have one research question, do you have to create um, a label for the research question? Yes, you can do that. If you even have one research question, it's okay to do that because when you are going through the data, you may find something so interesting that you it is not addressing the research question that you have, but is something that is so important that you want to code it and make it like other findings and maybe talk about it. So in order to separate those information that you think is important, but it's not addressing the research question and code them differently, it's always important to create a container for your research question, even if you have one research question, right? So now that we finish, we have to move on and open one of the transcripts and start the coding process. How do you do that? You can just double click. So the one of them, so I'm gonna double click the P1 and it opens. So I have all the transcript here. 
So, and also you can see here on your right side, you can see the two research questions and then there's no information there. That's why it's zero there. This means that there's nothing in that container, right? The next step is to start the coding process. And coding is all about going through your data, identifying information that you think is significant, information that you think can address any of the research questions that you have, and then developing a phrase. A phrase can be two to five words, representing that information at the same time addressing the research question that you have. That's all about coding, right? So going through, I can see that there is an information here that may be relevant, right? Long hours. That is related to the causes of burnout. So I select long hours. And then what I will do next is to go to, so I know that long hours is addressing the research question one, right? So what label should I give? I can give one label that is, is uh, that you can give is having long hours, right? You can use participant own words to create the code if you want to, if it's be really reflecting the information that participant want to give you and at the same time addressing the research question that you have. So now that you have decided the code that you want to use to represent this significant information, what do you have to do next? You go to the code, uh, the um, research question and click on the plus sign here, right? And then type the code. So having long, because it's, you are quoting participants, sometimes you're using participant own words to code. Just to remind you, you can just put it in, um, in the quote, right? Long hours. It's not required, but it just reminds you that it's a code from participant. Uh, you are quoting participant. You're using participant own words to do the coding, right? Sometimes you can use your own words, but um, other times it's good to use their words to reflect what exactly they want to communicate to you. And you see the description here? This is where you can provide what this code represents, right? And then it's not really required is a way of reminding you the meaning of this code. So if you already know, um, you will remember that this code is for the um, participant expressing that they spend long hours and that is causing the, their burnout. You don't have to describe anything here. But if you want to describe this uh, opportunity for you to um, provide what this code represents. So you can say this code represents participants expression of the length of time they spend working right working so i think this is why it doesn't have to be perfect just to way to remind you about what the code represents as i said uh, you don't have to provide any information there if, you know, the code is so obvious, right? So you click on submit. So you can also see here that you have created a container under the first research question, right? But this container, there's nothing inside. So what do you have to do? You know, you make sure that this, the significant information it has been selected. Then you can double click the container, which is the code that you just created and that information will be dropped into that container. So, so as you can see here, this shows that the SF that has been selected from P1 document, we have labeled the SS, SF long, uh, having long hours, right? That is that information that you, and you can also see here that that connection, if you bring the case here to show that this, selected information have been labeled having long hours. So that's all about the coding. So you do the same thing. So you go through, um, this one is another significant information addressing research question one, right? So what you can do is uh, think about, okay, what label should I give to this information? This one is really addressing the first research question. Uh, the participant was saying that they have numerous clinical and administrative work to do, right? that is causing the burnout, right? So after you have understood what participant was telling you, the next step is to develop a phrase that best represents this information at the same time addressing the research question, which is what are the causes of burnout? 
if you know the label, you click on the plus sign and type the label here. So this label is having numerous work-related tax, right? So this one will best represent this information at the same time addressing the research question that you have. And then you click on submit. When you click on submit, you see that there's empty container here. And make sure that that information has been selected and then you double click. And then it shows that now you have this significant information in this con new container. So that's how you're going to do. You go through, let's do another one. Lack of balance with work and home life. So you select that information. And then this is what is addressing the research question one, right? And then you look at uh, what label do you have to give to it? So the label could be no work family balance, right? That could be a label. So now when you decide on the label, you click on the plus sign behind the research question. And then you type the label and then you click on submit and it will appear here and then you double click to when you double click that information will be dropped into this container so that's how you're going to do it you go through uh let's do another one this one is about solution engaging in prayer and reflection so you spend time praying and reflecting so that to be you can select that information and then, so the label that we can use to represent this information is engaging in meditation, right? So you click on the plus sign. You click on the plus sign behind the um, the research question two. You type that information here and then you click on submit, right? This empty container, make sure that the place has been selected and you double click. And then you can get that information here. So that's how you're going to do for all of them. Let's do another significant information about that we can select. Um, the, the participant was talking about, you know, having time with family and also engaging in exercising. They are also important. So let's select engaging and exercising first. And then you click on solutions and then type engaging in exercising and then click on submit and double click on it. So that that information will be there. Here to uh, having time with family, right? This one, it talks about having time with family. You click on the plus sign. And then you type having time with family. And then you click on submit. And then you can double click so that the information will be dropped, right? So I think it looks like we finished with the first transcript. Then when, what you have to do is to go and to the second transcript. How do you do that? You can go click on the media and then you can click on the one and it opens. So you can see that, you know, that the codes are still on the right side, right? Remember, they are all containers where you go through the data. And then if you think that, any information is related to the existing container, you can just select and drop. If you realize that um, the existing container cannot be connected to any significant information that you have here, you create a new container, right? So imagine that you go through and then you see having numerous work-related hours, right? So there's a place that talks about now, let me see. So this one, is, you know, is quite is related to having numerous uh, work to do, right? So we already have a container for that, having numerous work-related tasks. So what we have to do is just select that significant information and double-click this container, and you see that it has turned to two. This means that now we have two significant information connected to this code or this container. So that's how you're going to do. You go through, you select. And then first think about, okay, can I, can you drop it to an existing container? If not, you create a new container. So this one having a lot of work to do. So it looks like we can drop it into having numerous work related tasks. So you double click that. And now you get three information in this container. So that's how you're going to do. You go through, you select 
and then think about a code and see whether existing code can uh, be connected to the if existing code can be connected you just select and double click if the existing code cannot then what do you do you create a new code right so that's how you're going to do so let me show you the final product so that you see how um the final product will look like so let's see um let me open this one and go to maybe the fifth one and you see so you see here that we have created a lot of containers right under each of the research question that we have right and then this you know the highlights shows the places that have been selected right and drop into those containers right so that's how you have to think about it and the coding process. So at the end, you're going to get a lot of code. So let's go to the home page and so that you see what I'm talking about. So you see here that you have a lot of code here. When you even go to code, you can see um, that a lot of code has been created, right? And then you ask yourself, what do you have to do next, right? The next stage is to think about categorizing the code to develop themes, right? Because, you know, you have a lot of codes. You cannot just present each of the codes to your audience. It's too much, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Code. So you have to think about categorizing them. And then when you categorize them, you, them, you can think about, okay, what theme can we use or what label should we use to label the categories that we have and that label could be a theme addressing the research question so one example is this one we created a theme called feeling overwhelmed and then we drop all the things the code that talks about feeling inadequate and overwhelmed into this theme right in terms of creating a theme you can do it inside the use or you can do it outside I always prefer you doing outside because you have the liberty to see all the codes and then move them around. You can create a table and then put the code into various clusters, right? And then be able to develop very good themes that you can use to address your research questions. So after developing the theme, you have to come back to the deduce and bring the themes here and then create the themes here and then drop the uh, the code that you have into their ref respective teams. So that's how you're going to do it for the next stage, right? So now you know how to look through the transcript, identify significant information, develop a code or a group of codes, and then connect the code to the significant information. That's what we have done now. And making sure that the codes are grouped under the research question that you have so that it will be easy for you to do the the next step which is categorizing code under each of the research question that you have so the next one i'm going to show you how to categorize the codes to form themes to help you to address your research question that you have thank you for your time